In the last one decade, with the rise of electric vehicles in India, the usage of batteries has also increased. Different battery makers from India or from other countries are now trying to compete with each other to make space to make their presence felt in the booming battery market in the country. We recently spotted Tesla Power, which is slowly trying to make its presence felt in the Indian battery market sector. We recently talked to Kavinder Khurana, the MD of Tesla Power USA, to know about the journey of the company, the latest product it is launching, the future plans and much more. This is Manish Kumar and you are watching The Conversations with Saur Energy International. Tesla Power USA is a US-based entity. Uh, Mr. John Brasinas is the chairman. And uh, we got in touch in, way back in 2014 uh, when Mr. John was visiting India. They had uh, invested very heavily into the battery rejuvenation technology, which we are saying it is our proprietary technology. I got introduced to that technology in 2014. So as an entrepreneur, it excited me because it is not only new and innovative technology, it is going to contribute a lot to the society as well. Since then our journey became, uh, we decided to launch the batteries in the same brand in 2020, but post COVID we could launch it in 2021. So 2021 September till date has been a very, very exciting and very, very you know, uh, interesting journey. So being the last entrant or the latest entrant in the industry of uh, batteries, it was very difficult to get a foothold with the conventional traders who are already working in this industry. Because of several factors, they did not probably trust us. But in the last two years, we have established this trust not only with the trade channel partners, but also with the customer. So when I say we have served more than 1 million customers, that means we have touched 1 million customer households either through their cars, their bikes, or their inverter batteries. And we have also launched the complete range of batteries, which, is, which was not expected. So there are few companies who are selling only inverter batteries, few companies focusing only on motorcycle battery or car battery. We have motorcycle, car, tractor, bus, truck, inverter, solar, UPS batteries, and we have introduced lithium-ion batteries as well. So since 2021, what we have achieved is that uh, we have uh, 300 plus distributors. We have created 300 retail outlets called Tesla Power Shops. And we have more than 1 million customers served since 2021. We have already opened 300 plus Tesla Power Shops. They are all equipped for battery charging as well as swapping. We are going to introduce E2 wheeler batteries also very soon, by which we are assuming that the consumers will be buying more batteries, replacement batteries now because EV started selling in 2019-20. So in last two years, three years of usage, many scooters or many two-wheelers will require battery replacement also. So we are launching battery batteries for e-two-wheelers as well. Going forward, we are looking at crossing a number of 1,000 retail outlets in this year itself. And by 2025, we are aiming to reach 5,000 outlets. We have seen that there are places where the solar energy can be produced and stored in batteries and that can be reused to charge the E2-wheeler batteries also. So we are experimenting that whether it is possible to generate solar energy, store it in batteries on our service centers or the Tesla power shops and then give the same charging to the batteries so that complete cycle of renewable can be done. Uh, the constraints, there are certain constraints because the space required sometimes is not available on the retail outlets because most of these centers will open on the retail shops and retail shops unfortunately sometimes do not have the space to have the solar panels to generate this electricity. Wherever we are finding this space, we are doing it and we are experimenting on it. So battery swapping is the ideal solution to the problems of the consumer. Scooters or bikes will be sold without battery. This is the future which I think will come. 
a time will come when the scooters and bikes will be sold without battery and battery will be sold as a service rather than being a component part of the product. So by doing that, you can easily swap the batteries from any location on your way. You don't need to wait for charging. But there is a problem. Niti Aayog has said about it. They are trying to solve it. But how soon can they solve it will decide the fate. The problem is that the every manufacturer, every OEM has a different type of battery, different size of battery, different charging port. Until unless the battery size, shape and the charging ports are standardized, swapping will, will become a, you know, will not become a reality. Currently, if you see players like Sun Mobility, they have uh, introduced battery swapping stations and they are going very aggressive in opening battery swapping stations. But they will be swapping batteries only for their own sold EVs of their brand. Similarly, if Aether or Olas of the world start opening battery swapping stations only for their own EVs or two-wheelers, then the consumer will be left with no choice but to find out that OEM or that brand's battery swapping station only. There cannot be a common battery swapping station for every brand. Therefore, standardization of battery size and charging port is important. Almost 40% because the cost of battery in a two-wheeler is 40 to 50% depending on which battery you are using. Lithium-ion batteries are more costly. So the cost in a e two-wheeler, a high-speed e two-wheeler where lithium-ion battery is used, almost 50% cost is battery. In low-speed two-wheelers where lithium-ion uh, lead-acid batteries are used, cost is probably 40%. So yes, it was a great news to hear that lithium has been detected and found in uh, parts of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, see, there's an interesting theory that while you are trying to run the E2 wheelers on batteries, making it green environment, how much amount of gases will be generated while extracting this uh, lithium ion from the uh, mines? So a lot of machinery equipment is going to be used, which is going to be fossil fuel driven to extract this lead, uh, sorry, not lead, lithium ion, uh, lithium ion uh, as a mineral. But over a period of time, once the batteries are made in lithium ion and they are recycled, then probably it will make sense in the longer run and that net zero contribution uh, can happen, net zero carbon can happen. Uh, the lithium ion industry or lithium ion technology in itself how long will it be uh, you know viable or will it grow or not it is also speculative because at the same time hydrogen fuel cells aluminium cell uh, aluminium fuel cells uh, so similar technologies are also being developed even sodium ion uh, batteries are being developed so how soon any other new technology can replace lithium ion which can be more effective and more economical than lithium ion is a big question mark today so it is speculative to say what will be the future with lithium ion. Lead acid battery market size is 70,000 crore in India. And it is still continuing to grow at a CAGR of 8 to 9 percent. Whereas the total value of lithium ion batteries sold in India today stands at less than 10 percent of the total value of batteries sold. So that means around 7,000 crore. The the amount of lithium ion battery consumption is going to increase with the increase in the adoption of EVs. EVs is the only space or only industry today, be it four wheelers or be it two wheelers or three wheelers, where lithium ion is going to be highly successful. But in other applications, which is telecom batteries, power sector batteries, UPS batteries, stationary backup, deep cycle batteries and cranking batteries. So all these applications will require lead acid batteries to continue. So lead acid batteries, I don't see uh, going away uh, immediately. Even if all the vehicles are converted into electric vehicles, still there will be applications which will require lead acid batteries, as I told you. So lead acid battery is there to stay for another 20, 30 years at least. The number of batteries when they increase, and when they are you know, thrown away or dumped in the ground, it is going to cause a huge and hazardous pollution. In order to save that, battery revival, battery recycling technologies have to be uh, the top priority of the innovators. 
We have also innovated a proprietary technology which we call EBEP, Electrochemical Battery Enhancement Process, which is applicable on lead acid batteries because they are more uh, in numbers today. So we have already revived or rejuvenated more than 200,000 batteries, 2 lakh batteries in India. And these batteries were such batteries which were almost discarded or going to be scrapped and they had lived their useful life. With using our technology, we have revived them and made them work for two years more. So if we adopt this kind of technologies which can recycle and reuse, it will become really useful for the environment. Otherwise, the environment is going to get the toll, take the toll. So lithium ion, uh, as you rightly said, is becoming popular in EVs because of its lightweight. And early charging, fast charging, which unfortunately lead acid is heavy and it takes time to charge a lead acid battery. You can't charge uh, lead acid battery, uh, you know, with a very high voltage or current. Uh, lithium ion's popularity is growing and I said it is very speculative to say where it will go because simultaneously multiple chemistries are being tested commercially. Hydrogen cells are being tested by every company. I was in a forum where in BMW president was saying that they are already testing hydrogen ion, uh, hydrogen fuel cells uh, in Europe. They have not tested it in India. But when it becomes popular and it's available, uh, it will again come to the same question. In Indian, we are value conscious people. What is cheaper? What is more economical? It will come to that. So lead acid is cheap as compared to is economical as compared to lithium ion, but how economical other technologies will be, that is yet to be seen. Uh, so there are two usages in uh, EVs, I would say. One is intra-city, within the city, where the mileage is less and the, the, the user moves 30, 40, 50 kilometers in a day. In such cases, both lead acid and lithium ion batteries will work. But when it comes to long distance, somebody taking a truck load from Delhi to Kashmir or Delhi to Hyderabad, uh, there you can't have this luxury of stopping over at different places and charging your batteries because a truck would need large amount of batteries as well, a large size of batteries as well. So their fuel cells is the answer because with fuel cells, you can run thousands of kilometers together uh, without charging. But at the end of the day, uh, I am again reiterating, the more economical will win the race uh, in India. In battery energy storage systems or even if uh, it is not BESS, maybe a smaller battery bank uh, like 2 volt cells or uh, 12 volt monoblocks, uh, it's a prohibitive cost for a user to install batteries to store energy. Uh, that energy might be required for grid balancing, it might be required for any other application, but prohibitive cost of buying new batteries is a deterrent. Therefore, we introduced the model called Power as a Service, where we are offering batteries of any type for any requirement for any application to MSMEs and corporates on a leasing model. We will install the batteries, we will maintain them and we will discard them following the, uh, the PCB uh, Central Pollution Control Board uh, rules and regulations and there is no headache for the consumer. They can just use the batteries to store energy and withdraw energy whenever they need it. Batteries are energy storage space. So if everybody is used to taking any other space on rent, on lease, why not batteries? Yes. Uh, we will be participating based on our eligibility, whether we are eligible or not that the conditions of the tender will decide, but we are aggressively moving towards that direction. Uh, we have already installed some battery energy storage systems in private sector and uh, through tenders also we have supplied uh, solar batteries and solar panels to the government uh, in some places, especially in Ladakh. Uh, going forward we're, with our vintage in the country, and our operations, uh, you know, uh, expanding, uh, we will definitely like to participate in the tenders for battery energy storage systems. Technology is uh, abundantly available for battery energy storage systems. It's the prohibitive cost of buying the battery energy storage systems that is a deterrent, because the requirement of energy is running in gigawatts today. 
and uh, as you are aware uh, the the indian production of energy through renewable sources is more than 120 gigawatts today uh, and it is aimed to reach 500 gigawatts so how many battery energy storage systems will be required uh, a huge number what will be the value and how much finance maybe billions of dollars uh, the answer is uh, uh, not very easy to give in this interview but i would say that large amount is needed yes at the same time the money is not a problem the adoption is the problem so once the adoption happens the leasing model like we are offering there are many players who will come forward on leasing model or you know opex models uh, but adoption really is a problem because the people still feel that why there is a need but when they dig deeper there is a need for battery energy storage systems for grid balancing also and for many other applications battery energy storage systems is the only solution in india we have definitely got plans to venture into more product lines uh, we are uh, appliances and appliances we have already introduced uh, alkaline uh, you know water purifiers we are thinking of launching innovative kitchen and home appliances as well uh, we are also planning to launch lubricants because that gels with our automotive batteries sale and the channel because the channel is very similar to the automotive batteries so and the channel is also looking forward for expansion of products because it adds to their uh, you know value chain uh, so these are the two clearly identified product lines that we are going to expand in near future uh, rest we will you know uh, rest will depend on the consumer needs what consumer wants that we are researching it's a big ocean small fish big fish and sharks they all live together so it doesn't mean that if sharks are there all small fish will be eaten up that's not the case here so we are pretty confident that we have started uh, maybe two years back uh, but uh, we are very confident about our future and uh, our footprint that we are going to create so it is going to be long long lasting so uh, tesla power usa operates in 18 countries right now uh four in latin america uh, around seven countries in africa uh and six countries in uh, middle east and india so 18 countries we have our operations we have offices in uh, uh, india in gurgaon uh, dubai uh, florida i don't see any other country contributing the kind of revenue india can or india is doing we are anticipating to contribute more than 50% percent from india in terms of total revenue globally for the company so definitely india makes a lot of uh, you know uh, sense to everybody and everybody is eyeing india india is world's focus right now as you are aware because we are the largest population uh, recent news was that we have crossed the population of china as well so we are the largest populated country and we have young population and we have intellect which is recognized by the world so therefore i see that the coming years is of india for india and india is going to become the most important market for any company in the world including us yes we do import we do import a few products uh, but they are being imported from the countries with which india has the free trade treaty fta uh, we are importing from thailand we are importing from bangladesh we are importing from malaysia but those are very small quantities 90% i would say is produced in india and our manufacturing partners are also uh, our great support and backbone uh, so we get our products manufactured as per our design and specifications by outsourcing we have not set up any manufacturing facility yet and in india, uh, in india. so our products are being manufactured by oems uh, based on our specifications and our quality control those are based in india or yes